morning, fellow Homo sapiens. Welcome to ANTH Channel 161 News. I'm Laura Rudisella, junior reporter. Here at our channel, we work to provide the public with university undergrad research conducted by students such as ourselves. Today, our topic of discussion regards our whereabouts and origins dating back 200,000 plus years ago. What makes us Homo sapiens? And who came before us? What kind of lives did our ancestors live? All of your questions will be answered today as we work to better inform everyone about the beginnings of humans. Now to Laura with our global news segment. Thanks, Laura. Now, moving on to the global portion of our broadcast. We'll be taking a look at the origination and eventual migration of Homo erectus. Appearing in East Africa almost two million years ago, common sites of discovery have been Tanzania and Ethiopia. Shout out to the Wiki. The fossil record has been beneficial in providing us with multiple sites following the ones in Africa. Homo erectus was also found in eastern China. This specimen was commonly known as Peking Man. Homo erectus is also been found in Europe, commonly in Spain and Italy, and is now known as Homo heidelbergensis. Is it safe to speculate that culture and knowledge of survival skills has been shown to evolve with the species? Tools and hearths found at the sites suggest so. But we also need to take into consideration the fact that when the species migrated to new areas, the individual environments impacted each group in different ways. How did Homo erectus get to all these places? Do you believe that this explains the differences of populations today and the, exist the existence of race? That's up to you to decide. All very important questions. Tune in next time to find the answers. Thanks, Laura. And now to our weather segment. We're going to be talking about a few species. First up is Homo habilis, and they ranged back to 2.4 to 1.4 million years ago, predominantly living in a grassland environment, which was perfect for scavenging. Next up came Homo erectus, dating back 1.9 million years ago to 143,000 years ago, and they lived in a savanna and grassland environment. After that was the Neanderthals, existing 400,000 to 40,000 years ago and they endured the glacial period with severe, rapid, and abrupt climate changes. The icy tundra, much unlike this, was very difficult to find food, so they traveled together and hunted wild packs of animals. Moving forward onto the most dominant species of them all, the Homo sapien, dated back 200 years, 200,000 years ago up to our present day, and they survived in very many different environments, such as tropics, savanna, and woodlands. In breaking news, I'm going to be talking about the Suda and Sahal shelves. They're exposed, located on the coast of Australia. This has been caused due to the dropping sea level that occurred during the... What was this? What was the time? Pleistocene. The Pleistocene Ice Age. We're expected to see a lot of new inhabitants on these newly formed land masses. Now to you, Josh. Today in sports, we have Artipithecus ramnus preparing for his world event in gymnastics. With the convenience of having both arboreal and bipedalism capabilities, Artie's features make him a great candidate to win. His big grasping toe gives him a great advantage over the other competitors. Moving on to hockey, the team Neanderthals is moving on to the finals. For the past few weeks, we at Channel 161 have been following the progress of Neanderthals throughout the postseason. We have projected them to place in the top three due to their robust stature, projective brow ridge, and large nose in order to breathe better. So, horses. the up-and-coming species Homo florensis has been doing big things in the horse racing world lately. With the use of pygmy horses to accommodate their small frame, these little guys are able to surpass normal sized jockeys and races. Now there has been some speculation on how these guys from Flores have been maintaining their small size. Why are they so little? Any foul play use? It has caused controversial talk within the athletic community and theories have begun to form. Dwarfism? We'll find out soon. And thank you, Josh. In the latest news, Neanderthals and art. They've gotten their recent inspiration from the cooler climates they inhabit. 
there are quite a few installations being showcased of their recent work. Paleolithic core technology is one of the newest tool making pieces. It shows a decrease in frequency of large bifacial tools that were popular before. We are now seeing artists focus on prepared core technology. A crowd favorite is titled Level Wah. Another piece being showcased is in the style known as Upper Paleolithic. It is currently being showcased in France. This has become controversial work due to its association with modern humans. Some think that it was copied rather than an original creation. Part of this collection focuses on hunting and it features spears, stone-tipped. It ties in closely with the work being shown in Manoron, France. It has an estimated 4,000 bison remains the artists incorporated in their single spray piece. Prey species work, as always, there is a huge scandal around the work on symbolism. It consists of pierced and grooved animal teeth and ivory rings. While Neanderthals are claiming this to be their own work, it's so unlike anything we have ever seen before. Rumor has it they may have not even created this piece. I guess it's up for the viewer to decide. Thanks for tuning in to Channel 161 News. All the work we do is in the name of Discovery, and we appreciate your interest in our show. The show is brought to you in part by the USC Anthropology Department, and we'd like to thank our sponsors, Christina, Andrew, and Dr. Kelly. Signing off for the staff of 161, I'm Laura Russo.